Hi, welcome to the next episode of Naria Lemaire Nutrition, and I'm your host, Naria. For those of you who are new, welcome. And to introduce myself, I am a registered dietitian, and I specialize in weight management, gut health, and overall, overall wellness. Today is a very special episode. I've been getting so many questions about my thoughts about the weight loss medications, Ozempic, Juxenda. Are they good? Should I try them? Are they bad? What are your thoughts here? As a dietitian that works with hundreds and even thousands of clients and patients on these medications, let's talk about it today. We'll talk about the good stuff, about the bad stuff. And at the end of the day, remember friends, the question, your the answer for you will be a discussion or should be a discussion that you have with your healthcare provider, with your doctor, with your nurse practitioner. First, let's start with the story. Before I became a registered dietitian and even during the early time as a dietitian, my thoughts on weight loss medications were very negative. My whole idea was to do it the regular way, diet, exercise, and so forth. Now, years moving forward, now after practicing as long as I have, working with as many individuals as I have, has my thoughts changed? Well, the thing is, I work with so many individuals. I even have my master's in behavioral health human behavior. We're very interesting. We're very interesting, right? In an ideal world, it would be uh, based on diet, exercise, healthy diet, focusing on your mental health. But in this world that we live in, we have to remember a lot of what we are exposed to, our environments, the people we're around, the foods that we eat, the air that we breathe, the age, a lot of these things can impact our hormones. And hormones really dictate a lot of how we feel. Are you hungry? Are you full? Are you happy? And so forth. So when I think about these weight loss medications, or I think of individuals who want to lose weight, it, the problem isn't motivation. I think a lot of people always go back to Nari, I'm just not motivated. The problem must be the motivation. It's not it. When you have your hormones maybe unbalanced and you have maybe ghrelin or leptin unbalanced and it's like, hey, eat, 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 or now you're full and they're just off, it's hard to not eat when your body is continuously telling you to eat, to eat, to eat. Now, I will say many times we feel hungry over and over throughout the day repeatedly because we're not eating nutrient-dense foods. A hundred percent that can happen. Right. So if we're eating a lot of processed foods, those are very empty. Right. So you want to have a very nutrient dense foods. What does that mean? High protein, low fat proteins, high fiber. I preach about these things all the time. Nutrient density. Before you consider the weight loss medications, I always tell my clients, my patients, I tell everyone, consider your diet first. Consider it first. Are you eating nutrient dense foods? Are you doing these things? Because if you are and you still have these, this, this feeling of hunger, then at that point, it could be appropriate. It could be appropriate. But you can't escape learning about how to do a healthy diet. You can't escape it. As many people as I work with, I've noticed that, and again, friends, this is from my experience. Everyone may have a different opinion, and that's okay. From my experience working with the amount of people that I have on these medications, I've noticed that the ones that take the time to build that foundations of nutrition, take the time to learn about how to change their habits, their environmental cues, and so forth, they are very much more successful with their health goals compared to the individuals that just rely on the medication. Many times, and you may have even noticed this, you're on the medications, everything's going good, your appetite's down, let's go, then there's no more at the pharmacy. You can't get a hold of it. You can't take the shot. And what happens? You know what happens. Usually the weight starts to come back. It comes back. And even more so in the individuals who don't take the time to learn about nutrient-dense foods. Friends, you can't escape it. You can't escape this. You have to go back and learn about the basics of nutrition, learn about why do I need protein, how much, what kind, carbs, what are they, what kind, what, so same with fats. You have to go to that, even if you're taking the weight loss medications. These medications are definitely appropriate for individuals who have been experienced overweight or obesity for an X period of time. 
think about the medications as a way to treat obesity since obesity is a chronic condition. Kind of like if someone was diabetic. If someone's diabetic and they need insulin, are you going to say, no, don't do it. Just fully go on your diet. We're going to give clients, patients what they need. And if they need the medication based on the conversation they have with their provider, then that's what's best for them. Is there harm there or is there is there kind of risks there? The biggest things that I hear from my people is they feel nauseated. Um, that's the biggest one that I hear. And a lot of that goes with the process. It could just be fixed by having small frequent meals, um, timing your meals, little tweaks like that could definitely help. Um, but at the end of the day, is it good for you? It's not a question that you should ask the general population. It's a question that you'd 100% should be asking your doctor, or your nurse practitioner, 100%. When, if the doctor, or your provider, if they do prescribe this medication, I encourage you to ask them for a referral to talk to a dietitian. Some do, some don't. I've seen both sides. I will say, unfortunately, I've seen more people who ha are on the medication that were not referred to a dietitian. So the whole thing about building a foundation of nutrition isn't always a patient's fault because I feel that they should be automatically referred to a dietitian, right? But I don't make the rules here in the United States in the healthcare system. I don't make the rules. But I am telling you, friends, if you are on this medication and you have not spoken to a dietitian or you're not having follows with the dietitian, please do so for your own long-term success. Now, the positives of this medication, think about it. If we find that weight loss in itself, not considering anything else, is beneficial for your body, reducing inflammation, reducing um, risk of chronic health conditions, just the weight loss, is that better than not taking the medications and trying things that you've done over and over and over and over and over again in your life? Now, if you're trying some different, sure, then try something different. That's something different, maybe hiring a dietitian like myself to be your coach and doing it that way. That's something different that you probably haven't done before. Most individuals have done diets over and over and over so many times. And most perceive that the new diet is different from the past when it's really a cycle. And friends, I was in the cycle. I know how it goes. But working with a dietitian is very different. Now, if you've done those diets, you've worked with the dietitian, and it's, there's still no success, then hey, let's see what's the next step. But take it step by step. I really encourage you to take it in that process versus just going from your own or working on weight loss on your own to medication. But will that be more beneficial than not to do it? You have to always think what's, what's going to help me the most? What's going to be more harmful? What's going to be more beneficial? Right? So with this medication, I personally do recommend it to a lot of the people I work with, depending on the situation. Do I recommend it with everyone? No. And even if I do recommend it, they have to have a conversation with their doctor or the nurse practitioner. They still have to talk to them to see if it is appropriate for them, right? So there's a step process there. But even if the provider gives them the medication or not, always go back to work with the dietitian. If it's through your insurance or if it's through hiring a dietitian, your future self will thank you. I promise you that. From what I've seen, and again, friends, this is from my own experience, from what I've seen, people usually tend to take their health a little bit more serious when they start to feel the symptoms. So if someone goes to the doctor and the doctor's like, hey, uh, you're experience, uh, experiencing overweight or obesity, the individual tends to, there, there's nothing immediately affecting me right now that I feel like I need to prioritize weight management or health. A few years later go by, maybe they're diagnosed with diabetes or maybe fatty liver, one of those conditions. And even then, sometimes individuals don't change, not until they start to feel the symptoms of not controlling their blood sugars or the pain of having fatty liver. Once they start to experience that pain, then at that point, that's when most individuals tend to make the change. I like to catch people before does it happen always? No, of course not. We're human. We like, we, we're humans. We like to stay in our comfort zone and what we know as long as possible. And we have to be ripped out of that before we decide to make that change. But 
if you go to the doctor and the doctor says, hey, you, you have type 2 diabetes or you have fatty liver, uh, we need to work on weight management. The, and if you failed before and you, if you work with a dietitian, then the medication may be the best option. There's different scenarios here. It's not just I'm overweight medication. It's, hey, I'm overweight or I'm obese. What are my options here? What's the best thing for me? I get a lot of people who come to me asking about um, weight loss surgeries. And again, this is going to be a conversation you have with the doctor. Is it going to be appropriate for you? You're going to have to talk to the doctor. But if you are looking to get healthy, it will not hurt to work with the dietitian before you get the surgery and get a, something cut off permanently. Remember, when you get these surgeries, it's cut off and it's cut off forever. You can't go back. Now, I do work with those patients too, and I see a lot of good and I see a lot of difficulties, I would say. I always tell people to consider their options. Should you consider with a dietitian first, maybe the weight loss medication after, and then maybe after, there's no success with that, maybe the surgery. But think about the options because at least with the medication, in my opinion, if you don't like it, you can stop it, right? If you go with the weight loss medication, with the weight loss surgery, once you get that surgery, you can't go back. And usually from what I see is in, in the negative situations is the symptoms that come about, they affect the people's quality of life significantly, significantly. So before you go into, I want to lose weight immediately right now, I want it off this year, just hold on, take a breather and review your options. So do I recommend the medication? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But even if I do, or even if I don't, that's still a conversation they're going to have to have with their provider, with their nurse, um, practitioner, or their doctor. They're still going to be the one to decide if it's totally appropriate for them. But there's different steps. And again, you talk to one dietitian, another dietitian, one doctor, another doctor, one nurse, another nurse. We all have our different ways to approach these things. Myself, as a weight management dietitian that's worked again with thousands, I've seen so many different scenarios. There's times that I do, sometimes that I don't. But I do encourage you because, again, I see a lot of, of, of people on the Internet asking other people who are not in the healthcare field if they recommend the medication and what are their experience and so forth. Don't base your decision on that. Like, it's definitely OK to ask what their experience is, but don't base your ultimate decision on that. Talk to your healthcare providers. Guys, we go to school for this stuff. <laughs> we spend a lot of time learning about it. Trust us. Definitely trust us. And if you haven't found a provider that you trust, take your time. Try to find if you want to work with a DO or an MD or a PA. Think about your options here. Find a provider that you trust. Build that report with them and then really see what are your options there. But with the weight loss medications, guys, there's good, there's bad, just like most things on in life. But at the end of the day, if you if you've had difficulty losing weight for years, try something different. And I'm not talking about a diet. <laughs> I'm not talking about a diet. If you've tried before, don't try on your own. It's okay to get a coach. You get a coach when you're going through difficulty, not when you're flourishing. You, When you're going through your difficult times, that's when you get your coach. Even for myself, as I'm growing my own business, I have my business coach. I'm not going to wait until my business is fully successful to hire my coach. No, I need him now. So I'm going to hire him now. Same with you. If you're working on your weight management journey, on your health, on your gut health, or your overall wellness, get your coach now. There's, there's, time won't wait. Time won't wait. I know I get a, I'll wait till next year. I'll wait till next Monday. I'll wait till my, I'm less stressed. I'll wait until I get a new job. I'll wait till I get more money. Guys, we, we can make excuses all day. There's always going to be a reason why not to do something. Always. There's never going to be a perfect time. There's always going to be a reason to be stressed about something. And if you always use that as your crutch or your reason not to be, um, take action in your own health, it's going to be harder as you get older. And again, I say this from personal experience. Maybe other practitioners have seen something different, but as we get older, it gets harder to change and the symptoms get worse. So friends, be wise in your decisions. Consider, consider the alternatives and think what's best for you. What's best for your unique situation. Maybe your friend has tried the medication, wasn't successful, totally was nauseated the whole time. 
she's not or he's not you. It may be best, again, to talk to your provider to see what are your options. Now, I'll end with this. A few, actually now a year or two now, oh my gosh, time flies. I was taking this obesity course and uh, it was, let's say 80% dietitians. Um, the rest was like maybe TAs, nurse practitioners and physician assistants. And at the beginning, the doctors were talking to us about the weight loss medications. And they ask, how many of you right now at the beginning of the course would recommend the, the medications? And I think that about 85% were like, no, we're not, we wouldn't recommend it. We wouldn't recommend it. And after the course, which was, I think it was like two months or so, I don't remember. Um, the doctor asked the question again, and that answer totally changed to like 95% recommending the weight loss medication when indicated. A lot of it goes back to education. So me personally, if you find me out on the street, if I meet another nurse, another dietitian, another doctor, whoever that is not aware of the medication, I love to talk about this because a lot of it, a lot of things in life even goes back to just not being educated properly. And once you learn about these things, you realize like, oh, okay, I, I see how that could be beneficial now. Before I only knew what I knew in my box. My box is getting bigger, now I know more. So guys, open your box a little bit, learn about other stuff, find alternatives, see what's best for you, talk to your provider, and that's where you're gonna make your decision. All right, so until next time, friends, have a good one. And any questions, any comments, definitely let me know below or send me an email, narilamere at gmail.com. I love to hear your questions. I love to hear your comments. A lot of my content is based on you. And don't forget to subscribe.